Okay, so let's try some evaluate cosine inverse mixed with cosine things. So this is 14 out of 7.8. I have first cosine of cosine inverse of a half. Okay, so what do you do first? Good. You should find an angle whose cosine is a half, right? Okay. What triangle do you think of when you think trig function equals a half? 45, 45, 30, 30, 60, 30, 60, 90. 30, 60, 90. The other one has root twos in it. Yeah. So, yeah, in the 45, 45, yeah. 90 triangle, there's a hypotenuse of root two. So, I'm thinking. Oh, am I working in degrees or radians? Let's do a and make you, radians. since they didn't tell you, you have to assume it's radians. Right? Yeah, you can kind of pick one if they don't tell you. I'm going to assume radians because I want you guys to start to work in radians as much as possible. So we're going to do a pi over 6, pi over 3, right angle triangle. Okay, what do I know about the sides on this sucker? One, two, two, three, three. <laughs> okay, they're 1, 2, and square root of 3 in. This order? Yes. Okay. All right. So what angle has cosine of a half? Five or six. Cosine should... No, I'm going half of that. Five or three. Yeah, I was there. The, <laughs> so I'm right. Right. I'm wondering, where is the adjacent <laughs> one and the hypotenuse two? Well, the hypotenuse is always two, right? Hmm. And a, one is adjacent to pi over three. So this guy here, right? through triangle land turns into pi over 3. And now what's the cosine of pi over 3? Yeah. yeah. Should be 1 half, right? Yes, this is it for this one. Cool? You have to do that. It's an undo function on a thingy, right? Yeah. It's an undo ah. function on a thingy. That's right. Yeah. Right? I don't even know why I understood that, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we're doing a function, and then it's unfunction, right? And the thing is, the cosine inverse is happening first, right? I didn't restrict the domain for cosine inverse, so this will be okay. You guys see that? But if I do the other way, like this other one they're asking for, things might not be quite okay. You guys see that? Like this one I would expect to get, like just looking at this, I should get 5 pi over 3, right? Yeah, except I'm not going to. Oh, this is what you were warning us about. Yeah, this is the one I was trying to warn you about last time. So when the, when the inverse function's on the inside, things are pretty chill. When the inverse function's on the outside, you have to worry about that restricted domain thing. You guys see that? So I know that cosine inverse is only going to give me answers in the top first. Yeah, cosine works in the top half between 0 and pi. And this thing's not between 0 and pi. You guys see that? So I know this isn't going to be the answer I get out of this thing. Is it going to be the reciprocal kind of thing? Yeah, I'm going to get flipped up or something. So let's figure it out. So where is 5 pi over 3 at on your picture? 300 degrees. It's 34 from me. I see. So how do I figure this out? Do you guys remember that trick for? Times 180. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> don't convert it to degrees. You shouldn't have to. You should be able to say, OK, this is 3 pi over 3 plus 2 pi over 3. Right? So this is a half rotation and two-thirds of another half rotation. So half rotation, two-thirds of the next one gets 45. me down here. That's 60 degrees, right? Which is really 1 pi over 3 short of all the way around. You guys see that? So alternatively, you could think about this as 2 pi minus pi over 3. Yeah, see that? So you go all the way around and then back off a of pi over 3. Yeah, so if I was really doing a nice job with my picture, I'd have an angle that looked a little bit more like that. Nice. You guys cool with us? 
OK, now I'm supposed to figure out the cosine of that angle. So what's the cosine there? Let's see. So that should be this triangle, right? Clap in here. So 2, 1, square root of 3. Which one of those is negative? Yeah, the square root of 3 is going down, right? You guys see that? OK, so my cosine of 5 pi over 3 is? Yeah, it's one half. It's one half, right? So now I'm taking cosine inverse of one half. And I just did cosine of in, cosine inverse of a half over here. What did I get when I did that? I got pi over three. Yeah, this will give me the angle reflected up into the quadrants where this thing works. You guys see that? Like cosine I, cosine inverse I know is gonna give me an angle in this thing. So since it's on like the positive side, is it going to do that, or would it do that on the uh, opposite side? It'll like, reflect yeah. up. Yeah, every single time. Yeah. Okay. It'll reflect into the top half. Anyway, you see the top two points. Well, yeah. No, I was, what I was thinking was even if it's on the negative side of the uh, cosine area, like that. Yeah. Know? So if I think of a triangle like this, right? Uh -huh. The thing with the same cosine uh -huh. is going to be a That's negative right. cosine, and so it's going to be up here. Okay. So it's going to just reflect over the x-axis. You guys all good with that? Yeah. What was your question, Lobo? He answered that I was wondering why the two gets a negative. Why the, oh, because it's the hypotenuse of the triangle. Just to recap, the cosines in the top two, sines in the right two, the tangents in the right and the fourth. Yeah. No. Wait, no. No, sine and the tangents. So, to get the domains to work, I restricted cosine to the top half, mm -hmm. sine to the right half, yeah. and tangent also to the right half. Tangent will also only give you angles in the right half. Okay. Tangent's a little better than the other two. Arc tangent, the arc tangent function works a little bit better than the other two. You can be a little less careful with it. You still have to worry about that reflecting business, but it's a little bit more robust than the, the sine and cosine inverse. You guys have a goal of that? Okay. So, yeah. This thing is a bit bizarre, right? That should just remind us that cosine and cosine inverse aren't actually unfunctions. Good? Cool? Questions? Yeah.